that, Jim, I apologize for the delay, but I guess why don't we just, by way of making sure I know exactly where we are today, what are we here to address? Who's, who's got the second, I guess? Your Honor, uh, we're here to address two things. One, scheduled on the, the docket is the continuation of the anti-slap motion hearing. And the court will recall that we uh, began the hearing recess for discovery and now we're back here and we have filed a I called it a motion for continuance uh, but I, I really think what we would like is after you you hear what the issues are your honor is to present our arguments concerning the anti-slap and then a recess for the court to deal with um, the issues concerning the discovery that they were ordered to do by the court May, may I suggest then, Your Honor, that the uh, most efficient use of our time is to proceed as we are scheduled. I'm now hearing for the first time that counsel files a motion for continuance, but not really. Uh, he wants to go ahead and continue with the hearing, which is scheduled for today, which is fine with us. We're, we're here, we're prepared, we're ready to go. As long as I get to respond uh, to the, uh, at least the legal portion of, uh, of the argument that they actually began last time, you remember. So, but it, is there some dispute regarding the discovery that we're attempting to achieve for the purposes of concluding the anti-slap hearing? Is, is there a dispute? The technical answer is yes. They are claiming that we have not complied. I apologize to the court that you were the recipient. You were copied on letters last week. I haven't seen Wonderful, because it's not my practice to copy the okay. court. We yes. have a dispute. But in any event, they claim that we have not uh, complied with the discovery of the court order. We claim that we have. <coughs> and if you want to hear the merits of their continuance motion, uh, uh, I'm certainly prepared to, to address that. If at the end of the day, Your Honor, what he's asking for is that we hold a hearing on the substantive anti-slap response, and then you hear at the end of it whether or not they're entitled to some discovery relief, uh, then, then we can take it up that way. <coughs> but either he filed a motion for continuance or he didn't. Well, so it's in the prayer, Your Honor. In, in the prayer, we ask either for continuance or uh, begin the hearing and have a recess. So. Um, uh, what we would like to present the, the merits of the motion for continuance, uh, but we were just sensitive to the fact that the court set aside time on its busy docket, so we anticipated the court would want to get something else done as well. But this is critical that we address the discovery issues and that leave us where we stand here today before you. And I, I believe the motion for continuance is in your, uh, it, it, it should be in your file there. It was filed this morning.
was on a different issue, but last time we were here in the 22nd, we were kind of attempting to do the same thing, Mr. Sevilla. You objected to the court assisting, if you will, or clarifying, if you will, some of the discovery disputes relative to the 128 discovery issues. And like I said, I know that's separate apart, but my point is, are we willing to go forward today with some clarification, assistance, mediation, if you will, on the discovery dispute as a part of reconvening the anti-SLAPP hearing? The quick answer, Your Honor, is yes, I'm willing and ready to go forward on anything you want to go forward. I'll remind the court that the reason for my position last time on that other issue was because it was a motion for sanction. It was asking for certain very penal relief, and I didn't want the sound bite to be leaving because all this is done for media purposes as much as anything else, that I actually have to defend a motion for sanctions when, in fact, it was an improper motion, and I wanted something proper done before I had to respond to it. Very good. That's not what we're dealing with today. Okay. Today, Your Honor, as I understand it, they're making claims that we have not complied with the discovery. At your pleasure, we have stated our position in the materials that are part of this motion. They have their letter of January 28th, and we have our response on January 29th that sets out our position on why we did it. And we even went back and told them that we removed the attorney's eyes on some of that material. So that is right. If you all have streamlined certain portions of that, clarified certain of that dispute on your own, that's great. Well, if they haven't accepted it, what we got instead of a response to our letter, we got when we walked in here a motion for continuance that's not in front of you. We made an attempt to work out as much as we can. Well, we'll get to it. If what you've done satisfies, then we'll just skip over to the next little issue. That's simple. But let me just refresh my memory. What is my date as far as the anti-SLAPP? The 15th, I believe. That's my point. We really need to reconvene at some point, get something moving. Today is the 13th. Oh, the 18th. Your Honor, I believe because of the Saturday and Sunday, President's Day, my calculations are Tuesday the 18th of the outer limit on concluding this hearing. And then the court has 30 days following that to issue a ruling. But you have to conclude the hearing. Yes, sir. The latest date for the hearing by my calculations is Tuesday the 18th. So does that mean at 5 p.m. or midnight? I think you have a full day. I think you have a full day. Cinderella. Your Honor. Yes, sir. I was just going to ask if I could proceed. Well, I think we certainly – are you suggesting, Mr. Jeffrey, that – and I'm trying to recall between difference of hearings. And have we actually taken some testimony? No, Your Honor. The anti-SLAPP – Or are you all just still arguing? The anti-SLAPP motion is not an evidentiary hearing. There's no evidence whatsoever. There are declarations and pleadings and things of that nature. Where we are, Your Honor – Well, that's what I mean. We were receiving the declarations. Yes, sir. We've received some evidence, testimony or written. Yes. Where we are is you allowed me to go forward and make my opening, my initial presentation, where I tried to break out for you the provisions of the anti-SLAPP statute, how we need it, and the relief that we seek under it. Mr. Wiegand then was allowed to give you a very brief opening and handed you some cases. He said some real quick top ten kind of points that is a preview to their response to the presentation I made. And that's where we stopped. We have today to reconvene where 
my understanding is they would go forward with responding to the motion that I had presented. And, I presented and in so doing, they can make their points about what discovery they believe they're entitled to, uh, they, but have not been provided. They, they can, they, they're going to respond and they're going to say what they okay. think they need. And then I believe that uh, I would be allowed to to reply to their response. Certainly. Okay. So, well, let's that, just do that. But at are. this juncture, I think we've probably had enough opportunity for the media. <coughs> Um, I'm not going to get down off the bench, but just from this point forward, anything electronic needs to be in front of the bench if it's on. Otherwise, if you're behind the rail, in the bench, I meant the rail. If you're behind the rail, just as a matter of uh, caution that we're abiding by the, in general, the, the court standing rules regarding electronic devices, etc. We'll just have to resort to pen and pencil behind the rail. But, uh, I'll take just a couple minutes. <laughs>